gonna turn, we're gonna turn this bottom down. I've already got the holes drilled. So Welcome, I'm Jerry Meesmer. I am here at the virtual woodworking show in Hickory, North Carolina at Klingspore. And I'm gonna show you how to make uh, some hummingbird houses. Here's the hummingbird houses. A uh, little, uh, little bit about myself. I've been turning since uh, about 2007. Um, I'm the one they write the safety book about. I'm the one that had the accidents. I'm the one that had the broken nose. I'm the one that had the broken cheek. I've had all my fingers broke. So I'm going to show you how not to break any bones. So let's get started. The first thing I like doing is a little prep work on the lathe. New guys turning and, and the old guys. The first thing I do is I clean, clean all this off. Even if you've got a new, new lathe, I take all that paint off. So I sand it down and then I buff it. So when you get done with it, it'll look like this. So that'll make your tools run a whole lot smoother across there. Because that's, that's what you're going to rest your tools on. And you want it to slide easy. The birdhouses, I make thousands of them. Literally thousands of them. And uh, I'm, this is a production mode for me. This isn't a uh, little... You can call it art, but it's production for me. Uh, now, the block, I'm gonna put a block of wood in here and, I, and I'm gonna turn a little spinning top first. I like to get started just turning a little small piece. And I basically just chuck it down just like that. A square, I don't make a tenon on it. Um, it it usually don't go anywhere. So then, this is a roughing gouge, and as if you notice, I've got the back of this polished too. This thing's all polished up. So what I want to do is it's sitting on the tool rest, and I'm a little bit above center. And I'm moving my body back and forth. So I don't have my arms just out here like that. So we're gonna, we're gonna rough this down smooth. And one thing good about a roughing gouge is you can use all the parts on the roughing gouge. So there's so many sharp points on this gouge. <clears throat> so then on the top, I just, I move in a little bit closer. And this is a 3-8 spindle gouge. And for those who want to know, this is this is a crown. This is a Carter roughing gouge. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's just... And I like to just make a nice, smooth run with the top to bring it down to a point. Now I'm using my hand as a fulcrum. You see I'm moving it back and forth. My bevel is right on the wood. Okay, so it's nice and slick. So you can move your tool rest back over close. You cut the machine off while you're doing it. And then I just I just come in like that. I, I just spin it around and then I start chucking, cutting away. And then I just reverse it. And you can see my wrist moving. got to make the handle and then we got to 
cut it off. And there's our first piece for this morning. But that's a good practice for you to do. And it's a great item you could give your grandkids, your kids, whatever. My grandson every seemed like every time he come over to shop, he always wanted me to make him a top. So what I did for him for Christmas, I made him a hundred of them. Different sizes, different shapes. And that's what his Christmas gift was. Just call me the tight granddaddy. Uh, we don't I don't we don't normally I like making things for people. It means more to me that I, make, I can make something and it means more for the person receiving. So, okay, we're gonna get started on the birdhouse. Uh, oh, and I've got two different styles and we're gonna make this one first. Now, I have been asked by people that are bird people they're ortho something they're called they got a name i don't know what they're called the people they're, they got letters behind them too but they they tell me that a hummingbird is not gonna go in this house well all i know is we've sold thousands of these thousands of them and we give them the opportunity to so if you don't give a bird an opportunity to go in a house, how is he going to go in a house? Someone originally had to build the first bluebird house. And how many people are building bluebird houses? Well, that's what I feel about the hummingbird houses. So, and it is a great wood turning piece to make because everything is made, everything is made. Even down to the perch, we make the perch. We make the top. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't make the string and I didn't make the eyelet, but everything else is made. So, and learned how to do a little bit of wood burning. I'm not a wood burner, but Michelle Parsons is, and she will be here later on next week. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with an eight quarter stock. Eight quarter stock is two inches thick. So that's what's considered eight quarter stock. Um, it's all in the rough, eight quarters about two and an eighth. So what I do is I rip these down as square as I can get them. Okay, then I go to my drill press and I, I go down from the top and drill a, I drill a one inch hole right here. So it's about an inch and a half down, I drill it inch hole. Okay, from the top to the perch, I drill an eighth of an inch hole and that's two and a half inches down. So it's easy numbers. And it, it just looked proportionally correct as how I come up with this. So what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this the same way as I did the top, okay? I'm not gonna put a tenon in it. I'm gonna put it in the four corners of the jaws of the chuck. And I typically look at my chuck when I'm putting, putting it in to make sure it's all evenly spaced. And it's all by eye. When, when you're doing about 300 of these at a time, you just chuck them in and go with it. All right. And then, oh, you're not supposed to bend down and pick up nothing. I remember that, that rule from class. <laughs> so, I don't know if you could, this is an inch and a, inch and a half drill bit, okay? My goal is just to drill past the perch hole. That's, that's what my goal is. Because uh, we're not for sure how far, how deep we really need to have it for these hummingbirds. So we're experimenting. So we're gonna, we're gonna turn the lathe on and we're gonna slow it down. I, li I like to run it about 500, 600. And we're gonna, we're gonna bring this in. We're gonna lock it down, okay? And then we're gonna crank it up. And we're, go we're just gonna drill past the perch. And we wanna clean it a little bit, come back out. 
So, as you can see, this takes some time. Just drilling these things is a, takes a massive amount of time. And the first ones I did, I guess the first, I don't know, four or five hundred, this is how we did it. Uh, it was a real fluke that I got into doing bird birdhouses. And uh, they're actually in our state magazine here in North Carolina. They sell them, sell them in the magazine. Uh, and we have a couple galleries that we sell them in. Okay, we're, we're uh, getting ready to turn the birdhouse. Uh, this is a piece of plastic. I don't know what type it is. It was given to me and I threaded it. And the reason I, and I put it on the life center and I, I like using this piece of plastic as a jam chuck. It's the, it's got some certain name to it. I don't know what the name of it is. I've had it ever since 2008, so, and now I'm getting older and I don't remember things. So, okay, the reason, the reason why I put the plastic on there, and we're gonna, if you see there's no, tiny hole down here. Okay, I didn't want to put no little holes in the bottom of the birdhouse because when I sign my name, I want to be able to sign it. I'm, tr I'm doing these things fast, so some of my signatures may be in the middle or maybe on the side. I just want to burn it and go, burn it and go because I'm doing so many of these. So I don't have a little hole in the way. Plus it's easy to jam chuck it. Okay, I made a jam chuck. This is just a, a block of wood and I turned it round, and what happens is this fits right in there just like that. So we're gonna stick this in the chuck. For everybody that wants to know, this is a one-way chuck, and I've, this was my first chuck, and I've had it ever since 2008. So, And I just tighten it up pretty good, run it, make sure it runs smooth, looks good to me. All right, then we're just gonna stick this in here, there, just like that. And I just wanna give me a little bit of room. And we're gonna jam it. That's why it's called a jam chuck, jam it. Okay, then we're gonna tighten everything back down. Spin it, make sure it's not gonna hit anything. Okay, it's not gonna hit anything. So I need to lower my tool rest just a hair. All right, now we're gonna crank it up. Okay, and then we're just gonna do just like we always do. We're gonna take the tool, the rough and gouge, and we're gonna go back and forth. We're riding on that bevel. And yes, you can cut backwards. See how it's cutting backwards? I'm cutting forward. I'm cutting backwards. Okay, I want to put start putting a little taper towards the bottom. So here's our taper. I just want to I just want to make it round. Okay, when you try to, you know, when you're turning a lot, you put your hand over here like that and feel it. Remember, this has a hole in it. And that hole hurts if your finger goes near it. So if you get hurt after me telling you that, that's your fault, not mine. But I've already told you, you're gonna get hurt. Okay, see, I'm still not, I'm still not round. Okay, we're gonna turn it off. I'm gonna show you what we got. We're not, we're not quite round yet. Okay, see, I still got a little bit right there. And you see the thickness of my wood, so I still got plenty of wood in here. So, let's, let's get her down. Ok, 
Okay, we should be feeling pretty good now. Sounding pretty good. Yep, yeah, that's smooth. Okay, I like to put a little decorative piece on the bottom. So I take the, the roughing gouge and I just end in it just like that. Just real slow and make that little curve in there. Okay, we're gonna bring out a new tool. Okay, this is this is a cove. If you can see it, I don't know about the glare. See, I got this one polished up too. Uh, this is a sorby beading tool. Okay, I got this tool in 2008 when I first started. And so the tools last you a long time. I don't know how these companies stay in business. <laughs> Not when to have somebody like me that's had it for this long. Okay, the only thing that on the birdhouses, when I started doing the birdhouses, you know, I'm worried about the thickness in here. So when I'm doing the other birdhouse, which I'm gonna show you that, the thickness has a lot to do with it. So what I did is I cut that bead down a little bit. I actually grinded the tool flat. And then I made a wheel on my grinder. And then I set it at an angle and I made my own curve here. And it looks like a half a bead, but it's not a half a bead. So when the product is done, it still looks like it, but it's not, it's not going in as deep. Now it took a lot of trials and errors to get that, but that's what I ended up doing. So, and I'm not telling you to get a new, get a new tool and grind it down just get thicker wood but this is eight quarter so okay we're gonna make a bead right here and I just kind of move it around a little bit now could you turn it with a spindle gouge make a bead with the spindle gouge yes now this is a half inch spindle gouge, and yes, I've had this one a long time too. <laughs> and it's, uh, I'm ready for a new one. So I just come in there and I clean that up a little bit. And then I'm, I'm coming back on this back side and see how I just spin that around like that. And then I'm coming back over the top. And that's how I, I shape that bottom. Okay, just like that. And then I come back with my roughing, roughing gouge and I bring all my cuts together. Just like that. All right. I also like the wood burnt or use a burning wire. This is a burning wire. Uh, this is actually wire that cuts out wind windshields. And these are the handles. Uh, but you can get burning wire, guitar wire, and you just place it on there and let it burn. Just like that. Now I have got, when I use the wire, it's not like I'm just dangling the wire up there. You gotta remember, this is rotating and you wanna hold this wire. So a lot of times I'll hold my, my forearm on the lathe and, and I've got my, my other arm tucked in and I'm burning it like that. That's how I'm doing it. So you gotta be real careful when you're burning. You just can't uh, stick it in there. Okay, the next thing I do, free advertisement for Klingspore. I use Klingspore paper, brought to you by Klingspore. <laughs> and I don't put my hand underneath the tool rest, okay? So if you're gonna sand, you can go over top like that. You could put this in reverse, or you, or you can go under like that, okay? So you can sand it. And this is, this is 180, so I just sand it off a little bit. And then the grain of the wood's going up and down. But with our products that we're making, we're, you know, we're, I'll go like this, and it's done, okay? As many as we're doing. So that is the bottom, that's what we do with the bottom. 
All right, then we got to make the top. So, okay, these are the tops. This, I buy 10 quarter walnut. This is 10 quarter walnut and I turn it round. This is seven inches long. And I just put it in here, in the chuck, just like this, there's no tannin. I do bring this up. Okay, so I'm gonna lock that in. And then I'm gonna tighten this down. Okay, the tops are all made, I, I usually, well on the ones for the magazine, they're all made out of walnut. And this is the kind of the mode we've been in, and it's just the walnut tops. So we tighten that down. Move it in as close as you can. Okay, and then we're gonna true it up. So. So we true it up. Okay, so that's true. Okay, I divide it up. I got my dividers right here. So we're gonna divide this up to about an inch and three quarters. Okay, and then we're gonna, we're gonna cut it. We've gotta make a tenon. This is the bottom. This is the tenon right there. Okay, and this one's a tenon. So we're actually making four of them. Okay, I'm gonna open it up just a little bit for my next tool coming in here. Okay, this is a what you call a badan. Uh, Nick Cook told me to get a badan back in 2008 and this is the same one that I had. So we're gonna open that up and we're gonna go one more. Okay, we ought to, ought to be pretty good. Oh, let me. Okay. So, I was making so many of these, I, I needed to come up with a way to make them faster. Remember what I was saying? Production's faster. Safer and faster, safer and faster. So, Sorby has this tenonin jig that I bought. And I, and, um, I decided to put the Robert Sorby tool on this for my tenonin because I only had one badan. This is my original badan. Well, it wouldn't fit. See, it wouldn't fit on there right. So I said, well, I wonder if I could fit it on here. And it fit right, fit perfect. It's actually a better deal for me because when this tip gets uh, cracked, chipped, dull, I only have to unscrew that and I don't ever have to change my setting. And that's, uh, that's another movement I don't have to do. So one less movement. But no one tells you how to use these things. I have looked and looked and no one tells you there's no, there's their, their kind of so-called instructions. So you got to be real careful running these things. And, and I kind of get set up, my body is set up, my whole body is into this. Now you see the top part right here, it's rubbing the back side. So, so it's still rubbing. Now. I had to learn that if I didn't make that tannin, this was not going to work because this wouldn't fit in there. So you had to, I had to give it room. See, it only gives you a little bit of room. And you see that tannin was a little bit bigger. And you seen how that grabbed a little bit. 
So that's what you got to be careful of. See how, see how it did all that? Which that ain't no big deal. We can take care of that. Okay, the next thing you do is we on my tops, I like putting a little bead down here. So I had to figure out a way when I first started. That, that one might be a goner there. We'll see. Let me see if I can straighten her up a little bit. Ah, oh, she's, yeah, she'll work. That'll work, that'll work. Okay. When I first started doing the tops, you want to make things decorative. Or I did. I wanted to make it look like I spent a lot of time on these things. And, and not spend much time on them. So you, you see this bead right there? Okay, I had this chucked up just the top into my lathe and I was running that bead. Well my jaws are right here so it wasn't doing real good. But I, I made a lot of them like that. And then you have this moment you figure out how to do things. So I had one of them good moments. And I said, I could make that bead now instead of later. So I use it right here. And so we're going to have four of these. Okay, let's we'll see what it looks like. Feels good. That feels good. All right. So now we'll now we'll burn it. And you can burn it now, you can burn it later. It don't matter. So, and usually I burn it now because when I'm making the tops, I'm just making them and putting them in a basket. Okay, now we got to part them. All right. We got to part them off. I do like to make sure everything fits good. See that one fits good. All right. So this is another this is a parting tool. So this one we're just going to go in here and we're going to open it up a little bit. Cuz that's you know, you got 7 inches sticking out there. Okay, there's one, all right? And every so often I check just to make sure my tenon is good and all that, make sure everything, see it fits. I'm not having to remeasure anything. And I'll usually do like 20 or 30 of them and check and just go back and forth. Okay, and then we'll cut off the last one. Okay, and let's check this one since this is the one we had problem with. And it's a little tight, but she's snug. Let me, uh, we'll rerun it, it don't matter. Took off a little bit. So that's a whole lot faster than taking a, another tool doing it. And I mean, here I got four tops ready to go, ready, ready to be rechucked and turn. All right. Okay. Next thing we do is we take this chuck off. We've got to, we've got to turn the top. And designing these things, I tried to work with the tools that I had. And that's that's what I tried to do. It's just what tools I had is the tools I'm gonna try to run it. And I had this. So I figured I could run that tenon in here. The process of these things didn't take overnight. It took me a while to get this thing figured out how to do it and make as many as we do. Uh, my wife and I are 
she glues the tops on and puts the perches on, sends them out. Okay, there's, your, there's our first one. We got it chucked. And then I get my half inch spindle gouge, wherever it is, okay. Okay, she's running true. Now what I Okay, just like so. This is the roof of the birdhouse. Remember, this is a roof. Okay, the other thing I, I've made, and I've had this since the beginning of these birdhouses, that same drill bit. It was, I do scroll sawing. I don't know what number this is. But this drill bit will go right here and it just goes in just like that. And I made a little handle. I painted it pink so I wouldn't lose it. And I've had this thing ever since the beginning. So, <laughs> unless I leave it at a club or something. Okay, the next thing we do is we, we're gonna taper it down. So I just start from the top and I'm making this curve. Can you, and I'm just spinning it around. If you look at the way I sharpened it, my bevel, see how my bevel is? I got a double bevel. Uh, it's typically it's either a two or three bevels. And a lot of, a lot of guys that are turning, they're using the Wolverine system. And it doesn't matter what kind of system you use. And, but it's a jig and they'll sharpen this whole clear as one bevel. And then what I do is I put a magnet or just something thick, a piece of wood or whatever, and bring the tool even closer, it does that secondary bevel. So the reason why I do a secondary bevel is so I can have that curvature like that. Because if you didn't, it, it would be bumpity bumpity bump, and you don't want that. I mean, you could see, if you got that, see, see in the camera, see the daylight right there? Uh, uh, these are real good cameras, so you could see the daylight on that secondary bevel. Okay, so we're just gonna keep on coming, keep cutting it down. Taking a little bit off at a time. Okay, just like that. Okay, then I come back and I like to skin this one over. It's just a, just a small, okay? Then I take a texturing tool. This is from Crown. This is a Crown. Sorby has one too. Uh, but I've just, I've always used this texturing tool. And it has a way to rest it on the tool rest. See, it's flat. I'm not changing the speed. You can change the speed. Uh, you get a different texturing pattern. But I basically just run it through just just like that, okay? Just one little wipe, and you see the texture in it gave. If you change the speed, it's gonna do a different texture if you change the angle. And since we're making so many, it's just fast, and don't I don't change the speeds no more. I used to, but not no more. There's just too many of them. Okay, this is the eyelet I put in. Now the main thing about the eyelet, is you don't let the machine run while you're putting that eyelet in because that hurts when that thing's spinning around. And the last finger I broke was this finger and I was spinning the chuck like this and my finger got stuck in there just like that and you see where this tool rest is. It went down like that and I, that was the only finger I ever heard broke. I literally heard the bone break. So, <laughs> I've got this dental pick, and I stick it there, and then I turn the handle. That's what you want to do. You want to keep your hand away from that chucks. Them jaws sticking out that far, it does hurt. All right. So we'll do we'll do 300 of them, real fast. And I do I do sand them off. I sand I br I just hit them with a little piece of sandpaper. This is pretty smooth. Okay, so this is the top. This is what we have so far. 
This is what we have so far. Okay, now we've got to do the perch. So, and it's just what I've done from the beginning. I've used ebony. I know that's not the favorite choice of, of buying because it is very expensive. Uh, I got a box of these pieces that are a half inch by half inch and then I rip them down to this size. And I stick it all the way in the lathe. Okay, so then I'll bring the jaws down. And we'll Okay. All right, so now I'll we'll just make it tight. Okay, then I want to move my tool rest as close as I can move it. Okay. Then <clears throat> this is a tool. This is this is a 3/8 spindle gouge. Okay, you can see see how it's uh, sharpened. There's very, very little bevel on that, and it's smooth all the way around. And I, I literally grind as the grinder's going around. I'm going like this, spinning. Okay, and then I put this on my buffing wheel because I want it to slide. I don't want it to grab. And see, even after work, you know, the wood is dirty too sometimes. So you have to really make sure this is clean after you do so many of them because it starts sticking. I guess it's the difference in the metal of the cast and this metal too could cause things. The cast does ding up a little more. So I'm gonna use this as my roughing gouge and my turning gouge. So we're going to round it off. Okay, we're going to I'm going to come back this way. I'm going to go back this way. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna do a real fast sweep over, just like that. Remember when we done the top from the beginning? That's how I do that. So I, I take different steps with everything. So then I I take my calipers, and after you do so many of them, you don't need the calipers. You just you know what an eighth of an inch is. Now you see how close my tool rest is. I'm gonna shut the lathe off before I move the tool rest. It is real close to the edge of that, and I don't want to nick it. Okay, so we're going to take, we're going to lower it down. So you want it about an eighth of an inch thick. So, and then we'll check it. We'll see how close we are. We're just a hair big. Okay, and then we'll just part it off with our spindle gouge. And you lose a few of them. But I'll do about 300 of these at a time, just like that, just feeding it. And then that goes in just like that. That's our first birdhouse. Uh, in the shop, the bottom piece takes me a minute and 35 seconds to do. And the tops, you, you can tell there's more movement on the tops. It takes, takes a little bit longer. But uh, the typical, because we've really tried to time it down to about a six to seven minute deal here when we're doing these. This goes in our state magazine. So typically we do all our wood burning before anything's 
glued on. So I have a basket of these. I have a basket of 200 sitting in the shop right now for me to burn. I've done 100 of them. And I am not a professional wood burner. Michelle Parsons is the professional. <laughs> And I know I got this hotter than what I'm supposed to have it, but this is how I do it because I'm just doing it fast. I just kind of put a line in here just like this. And then I put a line over here. And then I'll come back and put a line right there. And then come back and put that line. So it almost looks like a W, my wife says. Or upside down M. Okay, then I take, I call this a skew. This is a razor tip. Now the first one I had was thicker. It was thicker metal than that, and I don't know where you can buy them at now. I don't have a clue. Um, but you have to kind of position yourself to, and I kind of lay it on its side. And this, this is, to me is what's time consuming. And see, I'm just jumping them up and down, just putting lines in there. And then I'm gonna turn it over. Do the same thing here. Now it depends on what day it is, what time it is. Come five, five six, seven o'clock in the evening, after I do a few of these, I start falling asleep. And I have some in my pile that I have burned because I fell asleep. <laughs> So you just kind of dabbing them in there. Someone asked me about getting, I should get a stamp, a burning stamp. Well, it wouldn't be handmade then. I mean, I guess you, it still would be, but this just takes a while. What I should have done when I approached a magazine, I should have only made one of these flowers instead of two of them. And I think they call these waves of grain or something. I think that's what they call it. So this is, so you can tell this takes, it takes a couple of minutes doing this. And you see how that looks. Okay, then every one of them, I sign them, and I'm just glad my initials are this way. I make a J. That way I don't change my tip, my wood burner, because I was changing them before when I was signing my whole name. So I come up with my own, so there's my J and my M. And that's how I sign them now. Okay, so this is glued in and I use, we use tight bond. And what we do is we, we put a dab of glue here and we kind of roll that around a little bit. And then we stick it in there like that. And then the tops are glued in and we'll get a piece of little, like a popsicle stick and we'll put glue right here. Just wipe it around there. And we glue it in just like that. So this will be all glued up. Uh, and then we use, I use lacquer. And I mean, most people are not gonna set these outside. I mean, they're going to use it as a novelty setting them in the house. Uh, I know the ornithologist people, is that what it's called on the board? Orno ornitholo ornithology people? I don't know. You try it. Let me know. You can make sure you buy a bunch of them. They're in North Carolina Our State Magazine. I mean, it, it, it's, you know, it's, we try them out. So that's that one.